Hi everyone, so this is going to be more of a discussion, but I feel like it's a divinely led discussion. Someone here uh, needs to hear this. I feel like there's there's someone who's not setting boundaries with someone, and I feel like I feel, I feel like there are a couple different storylines. I feel like there's someone who's not setting boundaries with an abusive person, like physically abusive or mentally abusive. And I also feel like there might be some people that are psychics and you're just getting on your path and you just kind of feel sorry for everybody and you're you're not able to differentiate people that genuinely need help from psychic vampires that just want to take your energy. So I feel like there's a message here for someone. I want to start out by saying that there is a difference between darkness and evil, in my opinion. So there is evil. There are people that are just genuinely just evil. Um, you know, the kind of people that just, they get off on hurting people. Like, they like it. It's it's not a cry for help. It's not anger or pain or any of those things. They just genuinely like hurting people. It makes them feel good inside. And then there's darkness. So darkness is different. Darkness to me, that's shadow work, that's pain, that's anger, even self-destruction. Those are normal human emotions. Those are, it's a normal part of, of being alive, of being human. You, you can't really deny your shadow side. I really believe in embracing your emotions, whether good or bad. I believe in embracing happiness and, you know, pain, anger, whatever you're feeling. There's a reason you're feeling it. There's something deeper. There's, you know, your anger is, is telling you that there's something's not right, that there's a part of yourself that's not being listened to or there's a need that's not being met. You know, your pain is the same way. It's, it's there for a reason. Um, and sometimes it's just purging. And I'm not saying to feed the, feed it and just hold on to it as much as you can. But, you you know, I really believe in letting yourself feel what you feel. But anyway, it's also all perception. There's so many different perceptions and they're all valid. It's It's important to be able to see from multiple perspectives and understand why people do the things that they do, you know. Um, but I, I just want to say it's not black and white. Um there are really, so some of you are being used by actual evil people. You're not being used by self-destructive people or someone that has darkness in them. We all have some kind of darkness in us. You know, it's, it's human nature. Um, everyone has pain. Everyone has anger. Everyone has trauma, especially with society, is, you know, how society is today. That's normal. But some of you are actually being used by evil beings. Um, before I get into that, I do, I do just want to add to that. From my perspective, I really feel like it's just it's not black and white. You know, there are genuinely good people who are capable of doing bad things or who have done bad things in the past. And there are bad people who, you know, are capable of doing good things once in a while or who have done good things in the past. Um, people aren't that black and white. You know, no one is completely good or completely bad. It, it's like we all have, you know, these diverse aspects of ourselves. There's just some people that are more in denial of their shadow side than others. And um, I feel like I'm talking to someone who is empathic and psychic, but you're you're being... And I feel like this could just go for a lot of you. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like even if it's not your storyline, I feel like a lot of you are just going to be able to relate to this and take some advice from this. Um but a lot of empathic people tend to think that they have to walk on eggshells and they can't set boundaries with toxic people and they have to just, you know, forgive their abusers and um, tolerate abuse in order to be psychic. Otherwise, they feel like they're not a good person. And I just want to say there is a difference between being good and being harmless, and I'm sorry, I know that's very harsh, but it's like there's there's certain people that are empathic that are basically letting people treat them like shit, but they're not they're not doing any good in the world. They're they're just letting people treat them like shit. And then they're saying, well, you know, like they, they think that makes them a good person because they chose not to get angry or they chose they chose not to speak out. They chose to just kind of be complacent and let shit slide. And they think that that makes them a good person. And I'm sorry, but it, honestly, in my opinion, it does not. You need to do more than that to be a good person. Being harmless, um, being nonviolent does, does not necessarily make you a good person. Um, 
because you're not necessarily putting good in the world. You're just not putting negative in the world either. So it's kind of like almost like a neutral standpoint. And I'm, I'm saying that because, and this is my perspective, you have to find the perspective that's right for you. But some of you are getting on your psychic path. And I feel like you're being really misguided by the, um, the toxic positive types, the, uh, the, 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 the types that like to sweep shadow work under the rug and they like to tell you to just smile and just, you know, force yourself to be happy and um, forgive everyone that hurts you, even if you don't genuinely feel like forgiving them. Uh, they tell you that negative emotions like pain and anger are bad or evil or scary. And it, it's, it's so misleading because all you're going to do is suppress those sides of yourself and it's going to explode later in uglier ways. Your anger, your pain, your trauma, that is a part of who you are. I'm not saying that you should let it take over your life, but you shouldn't ignore what you're feeling. Like I said, those feelings are there for a reason. Um, but I feel like someone's being misled, like you have some type of false mentor around you, or maybe it's just the advice you're getting from others. And again, this is my perspective. There's so many different perspectives out there. You have to find the one that's right for you. You have to find what works for you personally, because what works for me might not work for you and vice versa. It's, it's all about, you know, your past life experience, your current life experience, your the way your mind works, the way, you know, who you are on a soul level. There's so many things that come into play. And it's important not just to look outside of yourself, but really tune in and meditate and decide like what resonates for you, what works for you personally. Like when it comes to manifesting, when it comes to whatever, like what works for you personally? What's what resonates the most with you? Who are you? I am personally all about being authentic, being real, being honest, being loyal, just being genuine, speaking your truth. Like that's what resonates with me. I'm I'm not I don't see it as like, oh, negative or positive. It's like, if I'm happy, I, you know, I want to feel that happiness. If I'm sad, I want to feel that sadness. I want to know why I'm feeling it. I want to tune into my emotions. I don't want to fight who I am on a soul level. I don't want to fight what I'm feeling. I want to go along with what I'm feeling, you know? Um, but anyway, I feel like some of you are being misled by, uh, because it's not resonating with you. And that's why I say misled, because like I said, there's so many perceptions out there. So for some people, that does work. For some people, the positive vibes only shit. I don't know how. I mean, I feel like that's probably for, um, it's probably for people who haven't been through a lot of shit in their life. Like people that have had pretty easy lives. I think it's probably easy for them to, to jump on the positive vibes only train and, and resonate with that because, there, there's not all these underlying energies that come into play, you know? So again, you have to figure out what works for you personally. But however I'm talking to you, I feel like you're trying to get on your spiritual path and you're, you see all these fake surface level healers that are all about just, you know, positive vibes only and just, uh, you know, suppress your negative emotions and all that bullshit. And you're not resonating with it for a reason. It, it's not for you. And, and like I said, there's a difference between being good and being harmless. And I feel like these these false leader types I, or these false healers, these surface level healers, they're, they, they don't have the emotional depth to really dig deep and hold space for someone's anger and pain and their self-destructive side just as much as their positive, happy, warm side. Like they don't have the emotional depth to really fully help people heal or to fully... Um, understand people that are diverse that are you know are complex <clears throat> they don't have that emotional depth to really fully love someone that has you know uh that that's complex like that so when you know when I say it, there's a difference between being harmless and being good I feel like a lot of these people convince you that in order to be good you have to be harmless and I really don't think that's the case um, or I, I, I probably, I think I worded that wrong. <laughs> um, a lot of them are encouraging you guys not only to not feel what you genuinely feel and not to honestly tune into your emotions, but they're also encouraging you guys to 
I feel like tolerate abuse or tolerate toxic situations and not put boundaries up. I feel like some of them are encouraging you guys to just kind of um, like, oh, send them love and light and, and positive energy when like someone's being abusive or you know that you need to stand up for yourself, but your throat chakra is being blocked and you're like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to be angry because that, you know, anger doesn't make you a bad person. I think there's certain ways you have to go about expressing that anger. You have to be mindful of your environment, of course, but anger does not make you a bad person. So, so yeah, I, I just feel like some of you, honestly, it's like you're being led to be harmless, but that doesn't, and I'm not saying you're not a good person, but I'm just saying that like being led to be harmless doesn't make you a good person. There are a lot of people that are completely harmless, like they don't speak up for themselves, they don't speak up for others, they don't express anger, they just let shit slide, and they see themselves as good people because of that. And honestly, in my opinion, you're you're not a good person because of that. You're not a good person just because you didn't say what needed to, need to be said or just because you didn't act out of anger. Like, that's bullshit. You're, you're not bringing any good into the world just by being silent and and letting people get away with shit and letting sit, let shit slide like you're 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 just harmless if anything <clears throat> and I don't even know if you could use the word harmless because actually for some people like if you're in an abusive relationship because I do feel like there's someone watching this that is in a physically abusive relationship and I'm just going to be real with you like you're not helping that person, that abuser, even if you see the good in him or in her, like you see who they used to be, you're not helping them by enabling them. So I don't even know if, if you could say, I mean, I, I, you know, I use the word harmless. I don't even know if, if harmless is the right word because it actually is kind of harmful. Not only are you harming yourself by not speaking your truth and not standing up and setting boundaries, but you're also enabling that person that you're trying to help. And you also hurt other empaths, future empaths that will run into that person. And I'll, I'll explain why. Because when you enable someone, if you're enabling a cheater, a, someone that's physically abusive, someone that's gaslighting you, if when you enable them, when you choose to just sweep that under the rug, like you choose to tolerate the physical or the mental abuse, um, and you tell yourself, well, you know, I'm a good person. At least I never, you know, argued back with them, or at least I, I loved them through all of it or whatever. But you know what? Like that person didn't learn anything through you. That person didn't learn any harsh karmic lessons through you. You basically told them that it's okay to treat people like that. You actually hurt other empaths because you taught them that empaths are easy targets. There's a stereotype that empaths are easy targets and that really needs to change. And it's not going to change unless empaths start standing up for themselves and speaking their truth and setting very firm boundaries. If empaths keep following these toxic positive positivity, you know, surface level healers that tell them to just forgive everyone and just, you know, just be nice all the time and smile all the time and don't say what you really feel like it's it's never going to change this cycle is going to continue so it's up to you guys to break that cycle and really learn to set boundaries for yourself even if it's not something you're used to or something you're familiar with it's really important to do it um because yeah it, it's like it hurts other uh, other impasse in the future <coughs> oh, sorry guys because then that abusive person that you were trying to save or heal or love or, you know, all of the above, whatever, gets it in their head like, hey, empaths are easy targets. Empaths, you teach them how empaths are. You teach them what works on empaths. You teach them how the mind of an empath works. And so when they've completely used you up and discarded you, they're going to go on to the next victim, which is going to be another empath. And they're going to do the same shit to them. And you taught them how to do that. I'm sorry. I know that's harsh, but it's true. You taught them how the mind of an empath works. You, you showed them, you taught them, you showed them that, that empaths tolerate a lot of, a lot of shit. You showed them that empaths are nice people, that they're pushovers. You continue that stereotype and so then the next empath gets abused by that person and it just the cycle continues again and again and again until they finally meet an empath that's not like that. They, and, you know, until they finally meet an empath and they try to gaslight them into, 
into, oh, you're supposed to be nice. You're supposed to be kind because you're empathic. And instead you're like, fuck you. I'm, I'm not doing, I'm not tolerating this. I'm going to call you out. You know, even if you love them, it's still important to call people out. You know what I mean? Even if you love this person, you are not doing yourself or them or future empaths any favors by enabling them. Because if you really love them and they have some type of toxic pattern, whether it's cheating, drugs, addiction, abuse, whatever it is. If you genuinely, unconditionally love them and your motives are unselfish, why aren't you calling them out? Why are you just letting shit slide because you don't want them to leave you or you don't want to, you know, be in an argument or you don't want to deal with it? Again, you're, you're not good. You're harmless. You're, you're, you know what I mean? You're not putting good in the world. You're, you're just neutral. Um, so it's like if someone you love is on drugs, like in there and like, I'm not saying like doing mushrooms once in a while, but I'm saying like hard drugs that are like killing them. You know, you want to call them out. You want to be like, hey, I'm here for you. This isn't okay. This is bullshit. This is not who you are. You need to get it together. You need to take a look in the mirror. Like, we'll get through it together. Like, I'm here for you, you know? Like, I think that's love more than more than enabling someone is. I think love is more like you're inspiring that person to be the best version of themselves. You're You're supporting that person. You're encouraging that person. You're... You're being honest. You're taking accountability and expecting accountability from that person as well. You know, sometimes you need to be that tower moment, that trigger for someone that makes them look in the mirror and realize, hey, I need to change. Like, I need to do something differently. Um, because if you enable someone, if someone's like on a self destructive path, like they're doing drugs or they're being just toxic and that's not who they are. If you really love them, you're going to call them out. You're going to want them to be the best best version of themselves. You're going to want to help them through that. You're not just going to, you know, just let them treat you like a doormat because you don't want them to leave you. Honestly, like if you really love that person, even if everyone else is, is getting cut out of their life or saying, hey, don't do drugs. I don't want you to die. Like... If you love them that much, you're going to be like, you know what, I, I would be devastated if you cut me out of your life, but I'm still going to say what needs to be said because you can do better than this. I want better than this for you. I want you to be alive. I want you to be safe. I want to make sure you're okay and you being okay, you being the best version of yourself is my priority, not just enabling you just so you don't leave me. You know what I mean? And that is hard. Like I have abandonment issues just like everyone else does. So like, trust me, I know like when I hear like whoever I'm talking to, like I know it's probably easier said than done, but, <clears throat> but honestly, like if you really love someone, you're, you're not gonna, you're going to be honest with them. You know what I mean? Like if you see them doing drugs or doing something toxic, like you're going to call them out and you're going to want better for them. You're going to see more potential in them. You're going to, you know, you're going to want them to be a better version of themselves. Um, and I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about like calling someone out for every little thing or anything like that. I'm talking about like extremes, you know what I mean? Like this person's doing hard drugs that might kill them. Like, yeah, they need to get called out or this person keeps like gaslighting people or playing head games with people. And like, you can kind of see through it, you know, they need to get called out. They need to, you know what I mean? It's like, there's things like that. I'm not just talking about like, oh, they like to party and drink sometimes. Like, no, you don't need to get called out for that. Like that's, that's part of being human. You know what I mean? Like a lot of us do it, but I'm talking about like really extreme things where you see it and you're like, that's, this is toxic as fuck. Like, this is not who that person is. Like, like they're, that just like popped out. Like they're blocking themselves from abundance from happiness you know what I mean um so I'm not trying to I'm not talking about like trying to change someone into what you want them to be I'm just talking about like I don't know just just really extreme toxic behaviors I guess but anyway I just want to say um it's not black and white like I said there's good people who can do bad things there's bad people who are capable of good things we all have different energies in all of us. It's like people are very complex. People are very diverse. That's human nature. Um, 
but some of you really need to learn how to be your empathic self, to be your intuitive self, and also be strong and set boundaries and call people out and speak your truth when necessary as well. Some of you guys really do need to find that balance. Um, because you can also become like the people that you're trying to help. You know, that kind of goes back to what I was just saying. It's like people aren't, yeah, there's evil people out there, but but most people I think aren't really good or bad. They're, they're like a mix of both and they can lean one way or the other. You know what I mean? People go through phases too where they're, they might go through a phase where they're, they're more bad than good or vice versa. It's like people, you know, people are very complex. Um, but as an empath, if you keep in that mentality of like, like I said, I'm sorry, it's harsh, but like you, there is a difference between being a harmless person, like basically being a neutral person, just letting shit slide and actually being a good person and bringing about changes in the world and, you know, even being a tower moment for someone that helps them make changes in their life. There's a big difference between that and just being harmless. So some of you need to ask yourselves, do you want to be a harmless person or do you actually want to be a good person? Because good people aren't always, um, in my opinion, it's like good people aren't always nice. I mean, good people are, they're gentle, they're empathic, they're loving, but good people can, you know, be assholes when it calls for it. Like they speak their truth. They're assertive. They, they're honest. They stand up for themselves. You know, it, it's not black and white. It's, it's not like you have to choose between being nice and being mean, um, it, it's, it, you know, depends on the environment, the circumstances, what energy is right for, for whatever environment you're in. What is, what does the situation call for? You have to ask yourself those questions. Um, because, you know, you can become like the people that you're trying to, to help. Some of you are actually being misled by, by, by beings or people, forces that are actually evil, like actual demonic forces or evil forces, like lower spirits that are using people um, to drain you. Because if an empath stays in a situation where he or she is just being abused and taken for granted and taken advantage of and just getting drained again and again and again and you're just giving and giving and giving and you're not getting any support or love in return, you're helping someone that does not want to be helped, like they don't want to, they don't, you're trying to change them, but they don't actually want to change, they don't see an error with their ways, um, you're wasting your time, you know. And you're just giving and giving and giving this energy to someone that doesn't want it, someone that doesn't appreciate it. And empaths can become narcissistic. A lot of narcissists actually used to be empathic, but they do, they go down that path where they give and they give and they give and they give more than they can afford to give. And they become bitter and angry. And then they just, it, it's like they keep going down that same path until they become the narcissist themselves. They start to embody those same traits of the person or the people that they were trying to help. And so it's really important not to let that happen to yourself. It's really important to set boundaries early on to not enable people. Even if you love someone that's super toxic, like even if you love someone that's like an absolute douchebag, you still don't want to enable them. Like I said, it doesn't do that person any good. You're, you're just, they're just going to, they, it's like, you're not, they're not learning anything from you. They're just going to be like, okay, cool. Like that works on empaths. Like empaths are easy targets. Let's go on to the next one and, and drain that empath too. Like they're just going to keep the same behavior up. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not helping anybody. It's not helping them. It's not helping you. It's not helping future empaths that are going to come into, into contact with that person. Um, and if you just give and give and give, you end up being like that person. You, you end up being the one that needs help. And then you're just not able to really help anyone yourself. You know what I mean? Uh, and I really feel like empaths should, I would love to see in the community. I would leave, I would, I would love to see more empaths helping other empaths. Like, because there's a lot of genuinely strong people out there who, People like they, they don't, they need help, but they don't get it because they're seen as strong. They have to be strong all the time or like empaths, psychics, healers that actually need support that actually need help. But they're the ones that end up, you know, having to give that support and help to others. So 
why wait until that person is like already at the narcissistic point? It's like, I think it's good to, for impasse to help other impasse, especially because then you have a mutual give and take. You're not, because if you just give and give and give and give to a psychic vampire, to someone that doesn't really want to change or they don't want your help, they, they like being how they are. They like being toxic. They like abusing people. Um, again, you're just going to give and give and give and you're not getting any of that energy in return. So when you meet someone who actually genuinely wants your help and genuinely wants your advice and support, you have no energy left to give them. You've already given it. You've already drained yourself. Like you, you don't have any, any energy left to give people that actually want and need that energy. So I really think it's important for healers to start helping other healers heal. You know, for empaths to really start supporting other empaths, you know, for there to be that mutual support. Um, because like I said, for some, it's like there there are these genuinely evil beings, not dark. Again, there's a difference between darkness and evil. Everyone's got darkness in them. Everyone has, you know, pain and anger and traumas. Almost everyone, you know, like most of us have been through that shit. Um, that's, that's a normal part of being human. But... Some of you guys are being drawn to people that are actually evil, like people that are actually like physically or mentally abusive and they love being that way. I'm not talking about self-destructive people or damaged people. No, I'm talking about people that are genuinely evil. And some of you do not realize the process that's taking place here is that you're being it's like demonically led or it's led by some kind of lower force that wants to take you off your spiritual path. And so you're giving and giving and giving to this abuser and you're seeing it's like an illusion you're seeing this tiny bit of light inside of them and that light you're seeing is a projection of what you would do in their situation or that light you're seeing inside of them it's like a projection of um the light you, that you have in yourself like it's an illusion and it's a demonic illusion you're seeing that little tiny bit of light because these evil spirits know <coughs> that as an empath if you see even a tiny little bit of good in someone, even a tiny little bit of light deep, deep down of who they used to be, that little spark of their soul or whatever, that you will dig and dig and dig and you will tolerate the abuse and you'll just keep trying to get to that little little piece, that little bit of light. But you're never going to get there because it's an illusion. You're you're They're just sending these people into your life to drain you so that you give and give and give to them and you never reach that that point you're trying to reach with them. But then you become like them. You take on their traits. You take on their narcissism. Um, and then you're off your spiritual path. So you, you really need to use more discernment to be more honest with yourself and recognize when there actually is a genuine light that you're seeing deep down inside of someone and when what you're being shown is just an illusion and the person's actually just kind of evil. You, you need to be more honest with yourself. You need to use discernment more in those situations. <coughs> really be more honest with yourself. And also, like, understand that people will not change unless they want to change. Even if that light in, in them is real, even if that little bit of light that you're trying to dig and dig and dig and get to is real that person's still not going to embrace that side of themselves. They're not going to accept it and change and become who they really are unless they really want to, unless they really have to. And honestly, if you are one of those people that's enabling them and just letting them treat you like garbage and just being treated like a doormat and you're just, you're telling yourself you're doing it out of love, they're never going to get to that point. They don't have the motivation to get to that point. They don't have the reason to get to that point. You're showing them that their toxic behavior, that the abuse is okay. You're showing them that you're going to tolerate it. And so they're just going to keep doing, doing it to you again and again and again. And like I said, they're just going to do it to other impasse in the future as well. Um... So it's really, really important to to be honest with yourself, to 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 really be honest with yourself. Like, does this person really want help? Do they want to change or are you trying to force them to change? Um, yeah. I think empaths also really have to learn to take into account what's going on on a day to day level. What's going on? Um, 
what's going on on like a conscious level because a lot of empaths they just try to ignore that they will literally like just go through being abused and not even like they'll they'll just focus on what's at the core of a person but you have to acknowledge the day-to-day behavior the day-to-day words the day-to-day actions those are also a part of who the person is you know you have to see the entire if you and if you really love someone you have to take who they've become into account too Even if you decide to stay, I'm not recommending staying with an abuser ever, but if you really love someone, you don't just hold on to that little illusion of that little bit of light that's deep, deep inside of them. If you really love someone, you're going to love every single thing that they are, the good, the bad, all of it. Like you, you can't, what's that quote from first night? Like I, you can't, I'm I'm saying Sean Connery, (laughs) you can't love people in slices. I think he says, or something like that. Like you take the good with the bad. Um, so it's like, you got to acknowledge the, the day-to-day words, actions, and behavior that that's part of who the person has become. That's part of who they are now. All of that, just, just see the entire picture you know, see every aspect of that person and decide if you really love them or not. But, um, but yeah, like I said, some of you just really need to, to learn to call people out. You need to speak your truth. Your, your throat chakra is being blocked up. You, you need to be more honest with yourself about how you really feel, um, and be more honest with others too. And, and again, if you really love someone, you're not going to enable them to continue to behave the way they're behaving. If you really love someone, you're going to be like, Hey, you did this and this is bullshit. And I think that there's more to you than this. You know what I mean? Like, I think there's more to you than, than doing meth every single day. Like, uh, like, I don't care if you're pissed at me, I'm going to call you out. Like, I don't want anything to happen to you or whatever the drug is. You know what I mean? Like if you really love someone, you will not enable them. Um, I think real love is based on like honesty, like deep emotional honesty and like genuine emotion, um, open communication. (coughs) Uh, You know, me personally, like there's been times when I've tried to help certain people, like, you know, like when I've given them messages and I've tried to get them on path and like they haven't. Um, this is like in the past, I'm thinking of like a couple that I knew this was like a few years or so ago, but like the divine wanted them together. Like they, the divine, like just really wanted them together. So I kept pushing them together and like, it it almost like annoyed both of them. You know what I mean? And it's like, I should have, and I, I, in that friendship too, I didn't realize till later that I was the one that was giving and giving and giving. And I was so like, I just wanted them to be together and be happy. And like, when I was going through something, neither of them like ever asked how I was doing or like checked on me or whatever. Like I noticed that like our conversations had become all about them. Um, and I'm just putting it out there. Like that was like one of those things. And it's like, I've been through so much, you know, so much bullshit, like, you know, that my empathy has gotten me into in the past. But like, that was like, just, that's just like one example of many, like one of those situations where it's like, I've learned to not give energy if it's not being reciprocated, um, or not give energy where it's not wanted or not asked for, you know, that's, that's the thing is like being more mindful of your energy, not just giving it away so easily. I'm not saying to be stingy with your energy, but just help people that want help. You know what I mean? Mean like give people advice that actually want your advice. Don't waste your advice on people that are not going to listen to what you have to say and and don't respect your opinion anyway. Don't, don't waste, you know, your healing on energy on someone that doesn't want to heal. Like they have no intention of healing. They don't even think anything's wrong with them. Like don't waste it because like I said, there's so many people out there that need healing. There's healers that are very damaged and very broken that need healing other healers to help them. Um, there's, you know, psychics, empaths that, you know, it's, it's like the people in the spiritual community should be supporting each other more instead of giving all that energy to psychic vampires. I, I really would love to see people that are actually like empathic and spiritual supporting each other more and supporting abusers and toxic vampire types less. That would be great. Um, but I've kind of like learned, you know, to, to match energy more. And a lot of people think that's petty. And I guess I can understand why someone would think it's petty, but it's, it's not in like a way of like, oh, I'm going to get, get revenge or fuck everyone. It's not like that. It's, I'm going to give the energy that I'm receiving. 
And sometimes I'll give a little bit more, but usually like when I'm in situations where I'm like, because there's a balance there. There are times when you might be intuitively called to give a little bit more energy than usual um, or to pull back more than usual. Like you have to use your intuition. Um, but like, I really believe in matching energy. So like if someone's not communicating with me, like if I've communicated a few times and they ignore me. I don't communicate anymore. If it's a friend, love interest, whatever, like I stop communicating because I'm like, okay, this person's showing me energetically that they don't want to talk to me or they're not interested in me. So I'm, why, why would I keep communicating with them if they're not interested or if they don't want to talk? Um, if someone's defensive with me, I'm defensive with them. Like I match their energy because if I'm completely open and vulnerable and gentle with someone who's being harsh or defensive with me, that's, it's going to cause me harm. You know what I mean? Like it, it's going to hurt me. It's going to, it's that energy is going to kind of penetrate and, and, and cause me harm. So I really personally, for me, what works for me is matching people's energy. I let other people, um, I, I, I observe their energy. I observe what they're doing and I usually respond accordingly to that. So if someone's ignoring me, I ignore them right back. If someone's open and vulnerable and loving with me, I'm open and vulnerable and loving with them. I'm very sensitive. I'm very gentle. I'm very loving, very empathetic. If I am given a safe space to be that way, if my energy is reciprocated, if it's valued, then I allow myself to be in that energy. Um, but yeah, if I'm ignored, I ignore the person back. If I'm if I'm um, being pursued, I pursue the person back. If, if someone's talking to me, making effort to communicate, I make effort for them too. I communicate with them back. I give them just as much as they're giving me. And of course, there's exceptions to this rule. But for the, mo for the most part, I feel like this, is, this works better for me than, you know, what I've done in the past, which is just give and give and give and give and then be left bitter and just completely broken and angry because I'm not getting anything back. Or like, watering dead plants like I've had so many friendships where it's like I would just message and message and like I would notice like if I stopped messaging I would not hear from the person like there is a couple friends that I had where I thought we were really close friends and I just I stopped messaging first I never heard from them again you know like don't water dead plants I know that's like another message I'm going on a tangent but don't water dead plants you know what I mean like like, I didn't realize it because I'm so used to being a giving person. I'm so used to being empathic that it's like, you know, I was just giving and giving to those people and always checking on them and like wanting to talk to them. And then it, it like it hit me. I'm like, wait, they never do the same for me. Like they don't, I'm not getting any messages first from them. So <clears throat> really be mindful of the energy around you decide. And what works for me might not work for you. You've got to decide for yourself. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to any of those you know, fake positive vibes, only healers, like listen to yourself, to your spirit guides, to your own intuition, because it's all perspective, you know, your past life experience, your current life experience, all those things come into play, all those things make you who you are. So, you know, what works for me might not work for you, you have to really decide, like, when do you feel most alive? When do you feel happiest? When do you feel most supportive, supported? Um, like what works for you, you know, maybe do some journaling and really ask yourself those tough questions. For me personally, being in so many situations in the past where I gave and gave and gave and I didn't feel supported or loved or wanted in return, like I don't do that anymore. You know what I mean? Even if I really have strong feelings for someone, if they ignore me, I will not talk to them like they, you know, again, I match energy. I, I will talk to the people who talk to me. I will be open with the people that are open with me. I will make time for the people who are making time for me. You know what I mean? That's like, that's the only way I'm going to not give too much of myself away. Um, yeah. Also, I want to say studying psychology helps a lot as well because I really believe in being aware of like the, like seeing the bigger picture, but like being aware of everything around you, aware of everything in your environment. So it's like not only, because I feel like empaths get stuck on that too, where they, they're focused on like the psychic aspect and the spiritual aspect, like the spiritual connection and like what's going on in the astral realm and all that. 
Um, and those things are important. Definitely. Like I prioritize those things a lot too, to be honest, like there's, there's, you know, but you have to also be mindful of what's going on consciously, like what's going on, like body language, actions, words, behaviors, like being able to read people, like to a degree, at least, um, just being mindful of everything that's around you, being mindful of all the different energies in the physical and in the higher realms as well, taking all of it into account and seeing the bigger picture is really important. So anyway, I hope this helps someone. I don't even know if anyone watched this whole thing. It was mostly me blabbing, but if you did, thanks for watching. I will, I'll, I'll put a reading up very soon. Um, if I have not already put one up by the time I post this video. So thank you guys.